Okay, so um, what we're here to talk about is learning and teaching in physics and the reflective practitioner. Up until now, we've always considered that teachers have been facilitators of learning. That's sort of been best practice. But I'd like to take it one step further and say that teachers are actually architects of the learning environment. So they don't just facilitate learning, they create the learning environment. I'm going to demonstrate with dessert. So I've just checked that everybody's actually had lunch, which means that they've done the prerequisites for this unit, and they're fine. I've also checked that they haven't got lactose intolerance, so that means that they can digest the knowledge content of this unit. And um, what I will do then is start thinking about this unit that I'm going to develop. When I talk about learning environments, it's not just the unit guide, it's not just the lecture theatres, it's not just those, it's all the artefacts, all the bits and pieces that go into making up the space that the students occupy when they're learning. It can be on campus, it can be online. So first of all, we need to determine the spaces and we'll pretend that these um, empty containers are the spaces. So it's the lecture theatre, it's the website, it's the um, types of things that we might do with the students. We're just sort of thinking about at this stage how we're going to do it. And all these things can be open for discussion. All these things can be open for thought. So a reflective practitioner thinks about the artefacts that they put into their learning environment. And as such, they're then able to describe to somebody else why they do the <coughs> things they do and the way that they do them. So let's start with a little bit of knowledge content in our learning environment. So we've got a little bit. Now we don't want too much because then we won't be able to get through it all. And we don't want too little because then the students will think that it's too easy. And it has to lead on from something, usually, and it leads to something. So there's quite a bit of consideration that has to go into determining exactly how much knowledge content you're going to put into your learning environment. And as I say, the students have to be well prepared for it. If they're not, you might have to do some remedial work. Or if the knowledge content can be variable, then you may be able to tailor it a little bit to the student's capabilities. But for this one, let's pretend it's physics, so everybody gets about the same knowledge content that they've got to go through. Now, how are we going to deliver that knowledge content? Well, we might do it through lectures. And here again, you're going to decide whether it's online lectures or whether it's face-to-face uh, -face lectures. You might decide whether you're going to um, do the online and then have face-to-face uh, -face or vice versa. You, all these things, again, are open for consideration. This is where the reflective practitioner comes in. So we'll have a few lectures, and they will be spotted through the whole unit. They won't all be at the beginning. They might not all be at the end, but you, you can decide. You might have your external students coming on campus for... Um, lectures and they'll get them all in bulk and then they'll go off and do workshops. So these things you have to think about. Okay, so we've got a few lectures in there. Um, with the, the knowledge content I missed out before, it might be useful to actually map your degree. So if you're mapping the degree, then you know what is in each of the units and you know how everything fits together. And then what you can do is you can re refer what's going on in your little bit to everything else that's going. So you can say, right, better learn this because that's coming up in the next unit. You did this before, so we're just reiterating what's going on in this unit. So you can backwards and forwards and link to what else you've been doing. I'm just looking to see what I've got. Right, next we need to decide if we're going to have a textbook or not. Now, I've done a whole video on textbooks if you want to have a look on um, my website and I can link to it. Um, but really, textbooks are sort of concentrated bits of information and they're well organised and they guide the student from place to place in step to step. So even though you might think that textbooks are a bit old hat, especially for first year students, they're really good because they give them a road map to what they're doing. So we better have I think we'll have a textbook in, in each of in here, because I teach first year physics, so I think textbooks are really important. 
By the time you get to third year, though, you might decide that you need to provide the texts. And they may not be books, they may be online journals, they may, you may take them off to all sorts of different places to find the information, and you may direct it. But each of those choices has to be thought about, has to be reasoned, has to be reflected upon. Okay, doing physics again, we need some labs. And labs are kind of, they have the knowledge, which is the chocolate on the outside, but then they've got other stuff in there. They've got skills that are in there that the students have to learn. They've got techniques that the students have to learn. So, and you have to decide how many, because labs are quite expensive to put on. So you've got to decide how many and what's the best way to do it for them. So we better have a couple of labs in each of our, our units. Usually, though, for physics you type things, you're looking at about five labs, but we don't want to overburden you at this stage. We'll just have two labs each. You can always come back for more labs if you want later, okay? All right. I hope nobody's allergic to, to knowledge and chocolate. No? Everyone's mm -hmm. fine with knowledge and chocolate. Good. Hang on, we need a few more labs in there. And I'm glad I prepared a bit of extra content and everything because we did have one person who started a little late, whoops, which is fine, because if you've, got, if you've got everything thought out well to start with, it makes it easier for people to catch up later. Okay, now we might want some open-ended workshops as well, because open-ended workshops bring creativity for our students. Um, so that they can design things and they can delve into things and they can pull things apart and they can understand things themselves. So I'll pop some wafers in because these things, I love to pull these to bits and see if I can get them all separately. So we'll pop those in there as well. We'll have some open-ended workshops and where the students can, could, could work in groups, but I'm going to assess them separately here for this type of stuff because then I don't have to worry about all the conflicts with groups and things. So now we've got our open-ended workshops in there. Somebody didn't get a workshop. Um, somebody didn't get a workshop. Oh, gee, there's always one, isn't there? There's always one you've got to chase around and sort out. Okay, we need some assessment. Uh, we won't have those two because they've just fallen out. Good. We need some assessment. We'll make the dates the assessment. Yeah, it's really, really bad. Okay. Two, well, the university says three pieces of assessment, but that might be a bit much. We'll do two major pieces of assessment for this. Only, you know, the... The labs will have some bits of small assessment associated with them. So we've got two bits of assessment that's going in there. The assessment has to reflect what's going on with the unit and everything. Um, so we'll pop in some assessment. The assessment has to work with everything else that's going on there. You wouldn't want to put olives in this dessert. The olive type assessment would not work in this dessert, okay? This has got to be dates or some other sweet thing to work in this dessert. It has to reflect the outcomes that you want, and it has to work with the content that you've got. All right, now there will be other things that you want to engage your students with. We've got a fairly good unit set up now. We've considered all the things to it, and now we're just ask, going to put in the polishing touches that actually makes it work a bit more for the students and brings in their everyday experiences. So you might um, throw in a few sims, Hang on, I've got to get that. Does it need to be shaken first? No, it's been shook. Oh, right. Yeah, works. Do it that way. So we might throw in some sims. We might have some apps. We might throw in a few um, computer programs that they've got to create to make things work. We might have a bit of electronic stuff that's got to go with it. Um, we might get them to look at, take photographs of things. So all the other, just like the icing on the cake, I suppose, or the cream in the dessert, the special things. And then to personalize the unit yourself, you'll have your stupid jokes. And you'll have the things that keep the students awake in lectures. And the interesting things on the website that turn them on. You don't want too much of these things though, because. Otherwise, they get distracted by the hundreds and thousands and the cream, and they don't see all the other stuff that's at the bottom. But we've got, so now we've got knowledge content, we've got skills, we've got um, cookbook workshops where they can learn um, some of the uh, tools that you want them to work with. We've got some simulations, so they're getting things from other places. 
We've got demonstrations, we've got funny stories, and I tell the same funny stories every year because it's even funny to watch the students who know the stories laugh at them. And of course, all that is wrapped up in the culture of the, um, the unit. And it's not just the unit, it's the culture of your science or your maths or your discipline or whatever. Whoops. And so therefore, the culture is we don't eat this with our fingers, we use a spoon. Whoops, and we have a napkin. So if you would like to come and get your unit dessert, you're more than welcome. Thank you.